All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Cornerens, President and CEO of Advanced Roofing. Started uh, Advanced Roofing in 1983. And today we're going to do hurricane season and preparedness. So uh, what I'd like to do is start out with a video just to remind us of what hurricanes can do both physically and also to uh, physically to people and the damage it can. Hurricane Dorian hit the Bahamas, Grand Bahamas, last uh, a year ago, actually, it's almost a year and a half ago. So we're gonna show you, share you this uh, quick video. What's happening now, everybody trying to get in NASA because there's no power, no food, no water, nothing to live. Every, everything we had was gone. No house to stay. Everybody's trying to get out. It ain't making no sense to stay with you. It's automatic. If you stay here, you can get sick. So we're trying to get out. We're talking about helping the Bahamas recover. We knew when we first went over there, the emergency stuff, we sent tarps, we flew things in, we took it by boat, generators, gas cans, food. So we're coming back around with Bahama Strong, Hope for Hope Town, Mission Resolve, and we're gonna help them put new roofs on right now. know that roofing contractors have big hearts and this is an opportunity to impact folks and participation financially as well as logistics as well as materials. In many cases they don't have the resources to pay their deductible on their homeowners insurance. Some of them don't even have homeowners coverage. The majority of the people either were uninsured or were not uh, effectively insured and uh, our focus now is narrowed down to about 46 homes you're right in the immediate Marsh Harbor area that are homes of folks that are local residents. I've been in emergency management um, for the past 15 years. I have seen the devastation and what it can do to a community. Um, so getting a community back together and working through what we believe is our humanitarian model is critical to the rebuild. So we have a Hope for Hope Town. We're up on Facebook. If you've got some roofing skills, logistical skills, or if you just want to write a check, those will help us out quite a bit. So look forward to anything you can do. Yeah, so, you know, we were very involved in the emergency stuff, and then we were able to, a group of contractors uh, got together, and the suppliers were able to get enough shingles uh, for over 100 homes, plywood and everything, and we continue to help out over there. But the big point is you can see the videos and we're gonna be talking about hurricane strength and, and forecasts and predictions. You know, this thing was not predicted to sit over Grand Bahama for 36 hours. And we know from our experience, anytime a hurricane slows down or stops, the incremental damage is tenfold because you're not just doing a uh, a one time going past and that's a lot of the uplift testing they do it certain amount of testing for a short period of time, but nobody tests for 36 hours or even hours at a time. So um, we're gonna learn a lot about that today. Again, um, advanced roofing, I started in 83. We uh, learn quickly. We like to take control of our different uh, subcontractors. So we started HVAC, electrical, got our own crane, sheet metal, lightning protection. And we got in solar in 07, one of the largest solar contractors in the United States for rooftop, but all under one roof and all things that we can work on together. One of the things with hurricanes is, you know, you want to know what your contractor has prior to going into hurricane season. You know, we have uh, statewide seven offices, 575 employees that we can draw on. If normally you won't see a hurricane, we've seen it go across the state before, but normally it's not going to hit all uh, the perimeter of the whole or the center of the whole state of Florida. I started Roof Connect and we're still members of Roof Connect. I'm on the board. We have 60 contractors around the country. So we're able to draw on over 3,000 roofing uh, associates to help us rebuild. You know, we always are prepared every, uh, every April. We have our hurricane preparedness, making sure we have everything in place, the plans, the people, 
generators, everything else. Next slide, please. Um, so today we're going to learn about the hurricanes, the historical, what happened last year, this uh, year's predictions, what to do to prepare for one. Uh, going to look at a little bit of roof asset management, take an inventory of what you have. Because if you have an insurance claim and you want to know that you've got things documented, you also want that for your warranty. So uh, we're going to talk about roof asset management. I'll talk about the key takeaways and then we'll have a Q&A. So um, you're going to enjoy what this is. And now a little poll. What the hurricane was this? August 24, 1992. Give you about 30 seconds to answer. And survey. Oh, boy, we got a lot of a lot of old timers in here. The millennials, I don't know, weren't born yet. But yes, that is correct. Hurricane Andrew. Hurricane Andrew uh, really changed the landscape of building codes in Florida. It's really when the, the, we woke up and said, whoa, this is crazy. Uh, we're going to play a little background video of this. This is Channel 7. This is Homestead Mall. On the right is a building we had just finished. It's uh, the Sears building. And that actually stayed on. And it was the only retail in that whole shopping center that opened up within weeks of Hurricane Andrew going through. But you can see the damage. And I, as much as I want to take credit for our roof staying on, we had a PSI uh, that designed it. So the design was proper. We, we do a lot of work with consultants. We believe in consultants, uh, you know, puts a level playing field with contractors, but we we're proud to say that our roof stayed on. Um, they did lose the ass, so it was called ears for a while, but uh, people didn't care as long as they got their shovels and brooms and whatever else they needed. Anyway, so here's, here's the nut by the numbers. As you can see, we had 13 hurricanes. Uh, Florida was actually spared, you know, one of the few years, but we had certainly enough threats on it, 30 named storms. And look at how many uh, times the, the NOAA put up 86 missions. Um, they now have more information. The technology is getting better. I, mean, I never knew they had underwater hurricane gliders, but they, they, they're out there as well. So we, we got a lot of, you know, history last year and this year's numbers are above average. You can see here, the, there's uh, 17 named, the average is 12. Last year we had 30. We've got eight hurricanes, uh, major ones predicted, six is the average, and then uh, well, four uh, major and eight, eight storms. So we've got, uh, we've got to look out and we got to get prepared. So um, next, yeah. Another survey. The right side is correct. You know, it's not only the strongest, the front right quadrant is the strongest punch of winds, but it also includes the tornadoes and increased surge. And surge is something we haven't really talked about, but it is a big concern up in the, you know, Katrina, they more, there was more surge damage than there was uh, wind damage. So right side, if you're on the right side, you're gonna know you're gonna get stronger winds and surge. Here's uh, uh, the wall of wind. We're proud to say that uh, we helped uh, get the, some of the first funding down uh, in, uh, for the wall of wind. It's where they can test real live hurricane conditions. They have a table where they can spend the, all the products and the building around. Uh, we're going to play that, Jess. Civil engineer Arindam Chaudhary and his team at Florida International University and the International Hurricane Research Center designed this 15 foot tall wall of wind, nicknamed WOW. I'm going to go up now to 60 miles an hour. The goal is to see if low rise structures and building materials can withstand the same wind forces they'd face in a full blown hurricane. We did testing on rooftop equipment and we looked at the loads. And based on the results, we send recommendations to the Florida Building Code, and those recommendations are now in the Florida Building Code. Manufacturers work with Chotary to test the durability of new products. For example, they want to see if this solar panel will stand up to hurricane force winds. Sensors measure the pressure on the panel as the wind starts to blow. 
we want to make sure everything stays within the frame that the whole unit stays on the racking itself. What wind speed? That's about 120. Can we flip it around though? A rotating turntable exposes all sides to headwinds. Now we can see effects from different angles of the wind and get the data for all the directions. I don't think we're going to see any damage to the panel based on what I saw. It's great stuff. It's, you couldn't get this in any other type of test. Next up, some roof tiles and adhesive foam. It's solid as a rock, the way it's installed. That foam really works with this good tile. Will they withstand WOW's forces? Right now, we're testing 122 miles per hour. The tiles and foam pass with flying colors. The building itself, not so much. Chotary says such foundation failures are rare, but lessons learned here could save lives, helping us better prepare for that next big storm. Yeah, so a quick funny story about that. And, you know, we learned that there's no cutting corners in anything you do, especially in roofing. Well, we got there and they were fastening down that building and they didn't have the uh, six inch by six inch plates to tie the two by eights to the, 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 the uh, table. So they just used some fairly large washers. And guess what happened? They didn't hold, so they didn't get to test the uh, the tile up to the wind speed because someone took a shortcut. Everybody standing around, they had to do the test, and uh, unfortunately, the people that were testing the foam adhesives weren't very happy and had to redo it. And we don't like redoing anything. So next up is uh, Clint Sockman, our VPL partner. He's going to talk a little bit about examples of high performance systems. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, uh, good morning, everybody. So when we start talking about high performance wind systems, we, we start looking at, at ways that we can alter some of the more traditional methods of application and enhance them or increase them and use combinations of uh, roofing methods to really, you know, elevate the game and, and step up. One of the leading um, criteria for uh, roof insurance is FM Global. FM has application standards that they put out. Uh, they test all of their own uh, roofing systems to their own standards. And they really are the premier, um, premier body for high performance roofing systems out there. Uh, some of the ways that they're able to do that is through uh, deck enhancements, through something like Rhino Bond, where we're able to use uh, plate bonded technology, where we're actually attaching the roof system to uh, the membrane rather than through the membrane. And what that allows us to do is spread the load of the fasteners throughout the deck. Um, and and that, does, that does a lot of things, but it, it, it takes the point load from concentrated points uh, in the decking that may not be over structural supports and spreads it out throughout the deck. It also takes the load off of the membrane itself in one location. So you're able to now get increased strengths. And we're also able to increase the fastening patterns dramatically over traditional uh, mechanical attachment in seams because we're no longer relying on the seam to provide the only location for attachment, meaning we can put those in uh, additional rhino bond fasteners anywhere that we want in the in the system because it's actually the, the plate itself is fused to the membrane rather than being screwed through the membrane. Uh, some other components and ways that we go through, uh, especially on adhered systems, we talk about enhancing our components to use gypsum core, uh, cover boards, Densdeck, uh, Secure Rock. These are, these are boards that provide superior strength. So there we're over 100 PSI in strength comparative to insulations that are 20 or 25 PSI in strength. And what does that mean? As we get foot traffic and subject it to significant loads, the adhesive has a stronger bonding surface. So we're able to get uh, much higher uplift. So we don't have a breakdown of the, of the surface of the board and delamination of the adhesives. Uh, we talked, uh, Rob talked about cutting corners. Uh, a lot of people think, well, I've attached my roof system uh, in a thousand different places. There's no way that it can go anywhere, right? My fasteter density is 50% more in the perimeter and 100% more in the corner. Well, what we often fail to uh, actually look at is what is the next step down and how is that roof deck that we put all those fasteners into actually secured to the structure? This is something that FM spends a lot of time on analyzing when they're going to put insurance on a building and ultimately insure a structure is how is that deck actually connected to the structure, to the bar joist or the, to the purlins below? 
Uh, because if we just successfully transfer all, an enormous amount of wind load down to a deck that's ultimately attached to a lesser load, the failure point will just be the deck rather than the roof system. Very similar to what happened in Rob's case where the whole building structure flew off of the platform, but the tiles were still attached. Uh, that, that's counterintuitive to what we're trying to accomplish. So uh, we often look at structurally enhancing our decking to make sure that that's attached appropriately. Um, we're seeing a lot with enhanced fastening patterns as far as uh, density of how much foam we're using or using a combination of adhesives and mechanical attachment. This is especially true with the new building code that was put in place uh, here in, in Florida right now. We're under the new FBC 2020, which has a new um, uh, ASCE 7 wind design criteria. So uh, the perimeter and corner attachments and the, the, the heights that we need to go to are much more difficult to achieve. So we're looking at how we use different uh, approvals and maybe mixing and matching mechanical attachment and adhesive to reach higher levels. Um, and then we have enhanced materials as well. Uh, you know, traditional TPOs are great if you're looking to achieve maybe a short-term vision, you don't have a lot of foot traffic, uh, but if you do have foot traffic or you're looking for a higher performance membrane, stepping up from a, from a traditional TPO into the PVC and PVC key membranes uh, made from all of almost all of your traditional manufacturers now are making these uh, upgraded membranes, FiberTight, Carlisle, GAF. Uh, so uh, readily available, but able to step out of that box. We're also seeing modified bitumen and resin uh, combinations being put out there where we have the flexibility of rolled good roofing, but the strength and durability of high performance resins. So that's uh, a few ways that we're out there putting high performance roof systems in place. One thing that we definitely want to talk about as well, and this is kind of not necessarily hurricane related, but as you're preparing for new projects that are coming out of the ground. Some of us are maybe trying to rush to get a new roof in uh, so our insurance doesn't lapse or uh, we have concerns about the upcoming hurricane season. Uh, right now, the roofing industry and the, really the construction industry in whole is under an enormous amount of pressure from material shortages and price increases. Uh, material shortages are primarily raw material shortages. We know of several large uh, insulation manufacturing plants that have been completely shut down due to not having raw materials. Uh, we've had jobs uh, being pushed out six, eight, 12 weeks on delivery schedule to get ISO. Uh, steel prices have nearly doubled from where they were in the fourth quarter, and that has affected our fasteners and our plates and all the costs that are coming through. Uh, so we're really seeing this everywhere. It's, uh, it's fueled by several things. One, the housing market is still on a tear. We saw wood uh, construction lumber hit all time highs yesterday uh, in the market. I, I think it was something like $1,600 per thousand board feet, an unheard of number. Copper is the same way right now at all, times high, all time highs. Um, so when we look at a market that's very strong, uh, some of the environmental delays and, and kind of odd things that have happened in shipping, uh, and you combine that with the potential for inflation, uh, material shortages and price increases are on the rise, and it's something that we wanted to let everybody know to keep an eye out for. With that, uh, time for another poll, another hurricane quiz. So we'll be uh, hurricane experts. Uh, September 10th, 2017. And Irma is the result. Uh, so, and I believe that that's true. So I'm gonna turn this back over to Rob and we'll go from there. Yeah, uh, it, it's actually uh, Julian, I could take it, but I don't wanna steal Julian. So. <laughs> Julian is our uh, our branch manager in uh, Dade County, Miami, and uh, we actually just closed on a two and a half million dollar property for Julian down in Miami. And uh, proud to say that out of our seven locations, we now own our buildings in six. And it's just our commitment to our clients that we're just not some national firm that comes in with a few pickup trucks, rent some space. But uh, Julian, congratulations on your closing tomorrow, and take us away. I mean, yes. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, and thanks everybody for attending our webinar today. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, Hurricane Irma that when we saw on the poll, basically this uh, was a big uh, category five hurricane. 
uh, winds up to 177 miles per hour. It was the strongest uh, storm recorded on the Atlantic. Uh, it left uh, three point, more than 3.5 people without power, uh, uh, material losses of up to $50 billion, and unfortunately, several deaths. So uh, here at Advance, our service department, uh, what can we do in order to assist you before the hurricane season? So basically, uh, uh, we encourage our customers to do ins inspections prior to the hurricane season and perform preventive maintenance uh, prior to these seasons. Uh, how do we do it? Basically, what we do is we document uh, uh, the existing condition of your roof with pictures and videos. We make sure that any roof components such as uh, exhaust fans, intake fans, uh, condensing units. Uh, if you have solar, we make sure that the solar panels are properly attached. If you have any sat satellite dishes or antennas, we make sure as well that they are attached. So basically we don't want any loose item on your roof. We make sure that the gutters are and the downspouts not only are functioning properly, but also that are, they are properly attached to your structure. If you have a, a skylights, most likely uh, the glass is going is not going to be impact rated. So what we want to do is we want to cover them with curb caps, either with plywood or with metal curb caps. Um, any point of drainage of your roof, either internal drains, scopers, downspouts, uh, gutters, we want to make sure that there is no blockage, that it's going to avoid the water to run off your roof once the storm passes. Uh, we want to remove any debris or any loose object again from your roof. Uh, we want to pay special attention to the uh, perimeter and the corner, which are the areas that are going to uh, suffer the highest wind pressure. So we want to make sure that any flashing is properly attached and watertight. Um, if you have lighting protection, we want to make sure that it's also properly attached either to the field or, or the place of the roof where it has been installed. Uh, we want to make sure that the hatches are functional, that uh, they close properly and they are watertight as well. And if you want to go above and beyond and you want to have proper documentation after the storm passes, you would like to do a moisture survey or a uh, wind up lift so you can compare the roof prior and after the hurricane uh, with your insurance. Some pictures of where we pay the uh, most attention. Uh, so basically, as I was saying, clogged drains. Uh, you'll see the picture there on the left of a clogged drain. We want to make sure as well that the drain is functioning properly, that the bolts are properly tied so you have proper compression and when water is running off the roof, does not leak. Uh, on mid-age modified bitumen roofs, you will see a lot of granule loss basically accumulated around the drain. So we want to make sure that we remove all, those lo all that loose granule from the drainage so it doesn't clog the drains. We uh, pay huge, huge attention to the pitch pans. We want to make sure that those pitch pans are properly filled either, either with roof cement or uh, portable sealers so water doesn't stay there and, and infiltrates your roof. We want to make sure that the pitch pans are not rusted as well. We also inspect the walls, not only the interior uh, walls, so they give us an indication of any active leak that we can seal while on site, but we also want to make sure that the exterior walls, uh, the waterproofing is in good uh, standard and the sealants, especially on wall joints, it's a uh, 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 sealant that it's in good standards as well. So those are specific points where we paid our attention. We also want uh, to have a proper and a detailed roof file. A proper roof file basically would have uh, the initial roof drawings and designs uh, before your real roof project or before you install your new roof. So we want to have all the drawings and specifications, uh, original plans. Uh, besides that, uh, during the process of installation, we want to have poor, uh, uh, permit applications, inspection progress from the municipalities, or from the manufacturers. And uh, very important, we want to keep uh, the warranty documents. Uh, once the uh, project has been completed, we want to have all the inspection reports or any pictures of repairs or uh, modifications of your roof. Uh, here at Advance, we have developed a uh, software called Advance Access, which is basically 
a cloud-based system that you can access easily from any uh, smart device. So that's uh, very handy for our customers as well. Next one. Uh, as I was saying, we want to make sure that uh, all the items on the roof are properly secured. Here are some pictures of some HVAC units where proper tie down uh, has been made on the bottom picture and uh, uh, some units without straps have, have get gotten loose on the upper pictures. So basically we've seen many uh, brand new roofs, uh, especially single ply roof systems um, where you have units flying all over the roofs, creating multiple punctures and most likely brand new roofs can become ruined only uh, not uh, because we haven't paid special attention to uh, attaching properly the, the unit. So special attention to that, making sure that they, uh, either the cable, the straps or the clips are properly attached, that, that they are not rusted and they have the proper uh, screws into them. So next one, Clint would explain us a little bit about how what do we do with the inspecting the solar if you have solar on the system? Thanks, Julian. Yeah, as, as Rob mentioned, solar is is uh, our fastest growing business segment out of uh, out of the kind of three vertical segments that we have, and we're seeing more and more solar being installed on existing roofs and put in place with new roofs. Uh, so, with that, solar is is really no different than than roofing from a from a perspective that we want to look at it. Uh, before storm season to make sure it's operating and then obviously after any major events to ensure that there's been no damage or things uh, of concern that may have happened uh, during the storm. Things that we're up there looking for pre-storm inverter status and communication status. Are we out getting our alerts and, and uh, our information on how the system's performing? Really doing a visual inspection of all of our electrical gear. Uh, everyone here is either managing buildings or specifying roofs in Florida. Uh, solar is no different with, uh, in regards to corrosion from salt air. Uh, we do a lot of design around having corrosive uh, proof gear, whether that's stainless steel gear, uh, all of our racking being aluminum and stainless as well. But we're out there looking for proper terminations, making sure that our gear is closed and properly locked, able to shut the door. Um, and we're looking at our torque marks. Every bolt that we uh, put in place on solar system, sometimes millions of bolted connections, uh, are torqued to the manufacturer specifications and then we mark every single bolt with a permanent paint marker. Uh, we wanna go up and spot check and make sure that for some reason we don't have any of those connections coming loose, uh, maybe putting our entire system at a larger risk. Uh, we just rebuilt two years ago um, uh, an enormous rooftop system on a beverage distributors building about 1.5 megawatts uh, and unfortunately, the installing contractor built it through general uh, th through a general contractor when the boom was being built. The entire system blew off their roof, uh, shredded 150,000 square foot roof. And forensically, when the, obviously the insurance companies got involved and they looked at it, um, the installing contractor used a bolt that wasn't uh, to spec for the racking system, and nothing was was torqued or marked to confirm that it was ever installed per specification. There's actually video of the whole entire array under a wind load of about 100 miles an hour vibrating and coming loose. Um, so looking at these torque marks is very critical. First things first, making sure you get a contractor to install it properly, but um, looking for conduits and connections, inspecting our wires to make sure that we don't have, uh, sometimes you could have rodents. Uh, I've seen frogs or lizards being inside electrical connections causing uh, shorts. So really just getting eyes on everything and inspecting it and documenting its condition going into the hurricane season so that in the event of there is a storm, you have a very good baseline for where the system was pre-storm. Uh, and then going through the same, um, going through the same process after, after an event, uh, if there has been any damage, so you can identify that, rectify it, get it handled with your uh, insurance company. Turn it back over. All right, thank you, Clint. And uh, once the storm passes, uh, several common sense items, but it's worth to be reminded of. So basically, uh, first of all, take a lot of caution when going out. Uh, you there, most likely there will be a lot of uh, down power lines, uh, storm surge, which is both of them. It's a deadly combination contaminated water, any gas or water leak, uh, unstable structures. So uh, be very cautious when assessing the damage to your structure. 
uh, take as many pictures as you can or videos so you can have a proof of before and after the hurricane, uh, reach out your uh, insurance company as soon as you can. And very important, do not attempt to do any repair either to your roof or to your or to the structure. Uh, contact the professionals that can handle it better and they know how to handle those uh, uh, difficult situations. Uh, you will see a lot of non-solicited storm chasers companies that most likely are going to take your money away. So uh, trust the professionals that you've been working with in the past. Um, if you're using any generator, make sure that you're using it on the uh, outside and that you are filling the gas when they are not running. So these are cautions that it's always important to keep in mind. And uh, as Rob was saying at the beginning of the presentation, Advanced Roofing has uh, all of the services under one umbrella. So uh, give us a call if you need us to inspect any rooftop or solar equipment or HVAC, we will be glad to go and inspect it for you, especially before this hurricane season. So I'm giving back the word to Rob. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Clint. Uh, just a couple words. I get asked a lot. Well, how, you know, will our, if I put solar on my building, will it blow off? All our systems are designed to the current codes and we can even design them higher. We just finished Costex in Miami. We did the roofing and solar and, uh, you know, we did a, a press release. I was walking that totally impressed with how Clint talks about talking, talking down every bolt, everything. But yes, they are all designed for that. Uh, there's still tax in, uh, incentives. And, you know, we can do lunch and learns for solar. We have uh, previous ones on our website. All these, all these webinars are on our website. This will be on as well but we also do individual ones. And we recently got uh, certified for engineers as well. So if you have a building engineer that needs continuing ed, we can do that as well. And then we we'll talk a little bit about warranties. You know, manufacturers warranties are basically, to, you know, they're there to protect the manufacturer. Uh, and in, during hurricanes, if you read the fine print and you should read the fine print, well, some of them say gale force winds, that's 42 miles an hour. They're not, they're going to walk from it. And then what if a hurricane goes over and even if it's a cat one, two or three, the roof doesn't go anywhere. What should you do? You should really call for a manufacturer's inspection to make sure it's still in effect. So, you know, five years down the road, you have a problem and it could be a material problem. They said, well, it went through a hurricane. So we strongly recommend, you know, a good contractor will help you with this, that you do an uh, inspection, even if your roof is watertight to make sure that the manufacturer is not going to use that as an excuse. Types of warranties is the NDL warranty. That's the best one. It stands for no dollar limit. So they are offered from anywhere from 10 to 30 years. And that will cover the whole roof system at no dollar limit. So it's not, you know, a prorated. Uh, we heard a lot about uh, this year's legislative. They were trying to reduce the uh, amount on residential that they'd have to pay out. They were going to prorate the uh, cost of a new roof and that got turned down. You got a material manufacturer, some of some deceptive contractors, we had to labor and material warranty. But if you read it, it's labor and material only if the material fails. And that's, you know, that's really hard to prove. And I go back to they're there to protect them. And then you have, you know, a contractor's warranty. Um, you know, it's always good to get a great contractor. You do do you, a lot of the NRCA has a form of pre-qualification and part of it is given a financial disclosure on a balance sheet. And uh, you want to look at that. Um, next is, you know, understanding insurance. And this is really uh, important to, to pay attention now because this uh, insurance right now is like material cost and everything else. The uh, the excess carriers, the Lloyds of London, all of these uh, major reinsurance carriers took a big hit last year with the hurricanes, especially in Texas. Every one of them lost money. And what do they do when they lose money? They try to make it up in a short period of time. I was talking to an agent this morning and feels that we should have legislation not to allow them just to try to recoup it in one year. But that's what they're doing. We're seeing big increases in our general liability. Um, in the uh, condominium market, we're seeing increases from 10 to 30 percent. 
There, there's uh, one Atlanta Coastal that won't take anything over 12 years. So knowing your policy now, pull it out, see what it is. Is it actual cal uh, cash value or is it re replacement cost? Obviously, the replacement cost is much, much better to, uh, than the actual cash value of when it was installed. And then understanding your wind deductible. You know, if you have a, a building and it's, you know, a high rise building and it's 5% of the value, you know, you could be looking at several hundred thousand before the wind insurance kicks in. And this is something to discuss with the, uh, your, your insurance agent. Is the uh, building impact compliant? You know, uh, Factory Mutual goes around and the reason they have the best rates in the market is because they do their own engineering and they'll tell uh, owner, well, you have, it's, this is, this isn't, you know, we need you to reattach the deck as Clint had said earlier. This is a weak point. So they make, they go through the whole thing, make sure the whole system, the whole building is going to be able to withstand, uh, you know, the whole force of a hurricane. Business income coverage, everybody knows what that is. You know, you want to make sure whether you want it or not, but living where we live, it's uh, I strongly recommend it. Ordinance of law coverage. What is that? That sounds like you need to call your attorney and find out, which I did. Um, so that basically tells you if, if you have to re-roof a building, you say you got the insurance and it's replacement value, but all of a sudden you have to do upgrades due to code changes, that coverage will save you a lot of money because now you're covered for any upgrades and codes that have changed from when you, you originally put the roof on or the original roof was there. So very important. Uh, you, you have uh, preventive maintenance contracts. We strongly recommend most of our clients go with that. We get out there once or twice a year and then inspect. And like Julian said, there's a lot of things that we do prior to the hurricane. And then uh, new roof versus repair. If you have more than 25% damage, code says you must replace the whole roof. So then, you know, you're, you should have that in it. And then you have the right to dry in. I mean, you don't have to wait for the insurance company. A lot of clients, you know, I've, I've been doing hurricanes since 1989. Uh, when the Hurricane Hugo hit the Virgin Islands, I got the contract for all the blue tarps down there. And every hurricane since, I'm up in the air within 24, 48 hours and surveying the damage in those areas and especially looking for our existing clients. I've called clients, I've sent crews out before they even got back into their buildings. So you have the right to dry in and all our rates are based on pre, uh, pre existing rates. We don't go and, you know, declare, okay, well now we're doubling our rates or whatever. All our customers are on a special list and the, the prices are the same regardless. And then like Julian said, a pictures, a thousand words. So anyway, uh, key takeaways from today is really, you know, take heed to the, the whatever it is and don't think it's just going to be that you know error on the the cautious side the safe side look at doreen what it did to the grand bahamas nobody thought it would sit there so have and have your plan in place you know get the emergency list uh, we give out our emergency list we used to use satellite phones but now the you know the systems are up and running and we have you know, in the cloud and everything else. So uh, that's kind of an old, you know, my age, you know, if we, we're always on the cutting edge, bleeding edge, as my son Mike says, but we always had the satellite phones when they first came out, but we're, we're able, we're, we're reachable a lot of different ways. Again, the insurance policy is big. Um, one thing I wanted to mention I didn't is builder's risk. We have a floater for builder's risk. What is builder's risk? Say you're doing a roof in the middle of a hurricane season and all the material gets blown into the ocean. Whose problem is that? Well, you, you better know that before you go to contracting before the hurricane season is. You know, we would have a floater to cover us. And then um, a lot of times the building owner and condominiums will take it. But if there's no builder's risk, the contractor doesn't have a floater or any type of thing and the building owner does it and you have a small contractor and he's doing five or 10 jobs and the hurricane hits in his area, that could put him out of business. So builder's risk is very important to make sure you have the right coverage, document and video. And then uh, we always uh, invite our existing new clients to share with you our advanced access system. It's a state of the art. There's nothing 
in it like it. We can, uh, you can dispatch leak tickets, but documentation for hurricanes and pre-hurricane is, is uh, really good. We'll do one for free just to get your, your, uh, your appetite and see what we can do. You can do everything from your phone. Uh, before school's out, I'll, I'm going to see if there's any questions at all. Uh, Jess, anything? We do have a few questions in the chat. Uh, we'll start with Matthew. What is the process to change the roof tie down from either toe nail or single wrap to double wrap? And would you recommend doing that? I will give that one to Clint. Yeah, I, I think that that is um, an HVAC uh, type question. And we, we do tie downs on mechanical units often. Uh, you know, rather than just relying on a curve that's attached to a deck and then uh, fasteners around the perimeter of the, the rooftop unit to the curb, uh, we'll do uh, standoffs on all four sides of mechanical units with stainless steel cabling uh, and turnbuckles to, to provide attachment to the mechanical units. Uh, it is absolutely uh, worth it as far as the strength and performance and wind speed, uh, high wind events. Uh, so I think it's it's uh, certainly recommended. We could share some details that we've used. This is uh, we do this on almost all of our school board work, um, and a lot of the condo work as well, where we're doing tie downs on mechanical units. Um, John Meckers okay. also had a good question uh, about for leak chasing. Uh, why is it not commonplace for roofers to use a FLIR camera, similar to waterproofing contractors, to look for leaks on walls and windows, etc.? Um, there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, and people do use them. It is not as commonplace uh, as, it, as it would be in, in other places for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we have a lot of gravel BUR roofs. Uh, gravel BUR roofs tend to hold water. And, and so the evaporation process can lead to false uh, readings, uh, meaning, you know, when, when, when there is water there throughout the day, you'll absorb heat. Uh, and the, the theory behind thermal camera, thermal imaging is that absorbed heat is where your, where your water is leaking. Uh, as the air temperature cools down at night, that, that, that water will hold the heat for a longer period of time so we can find hot spots sitting on the roof. Uh, but when we have gravel roofs and we also have exhaust vents that are putting heat out all the time or there may be ponding water, uh, thermals very hard. And you know, kind of the opposite of that is the new TPO membranes and reflective membranes. By design, they're actually designed to not absorb that heat that we rely on for thermal imaging. Uh, so it becomes very tricky to find thermal differences with white membrane roofs because they simply don't absorb the heat. And so when we, when we look at that over time, uh, the roof doesn't heat up uh, during the course of the day. So we're looking for that temperature differential between uh, the roof temperature and the air temperature. Very hard to get that as well. So it can read the tricky readings. I, 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 can, I will say it, it can be done. It takes a very talented thermographer to do it. And then it also takes secondary investigation with boots on the roof uh, to go back up and confirm what you're seeing is accurate. So um, that's- yeah, uh, But with that said, Clint, you know, we, we do use that tool. I mean, I was a pioneer in that. I had the Aztec with an infrared ball on it. We used to fly the coastline. We have handhelds at every branch, but you know, it, it, it is an art and you have to use the information as one piece of information like everything. You know, I used to have my nuclear license for a Troxel 3016, but the regulation for nuclear got so, so expensive. But you know, if we need to trace something down on a tough leak, we'll, we'll either use the infrared technology or capacitance or, or nuclear. So um, we do use them, but the reasons Clint mentioned, it's one piece. It's not going to give you all the answers most of the time. In one place we will use the infrareds is inside the building on walls because you can, you can very clearly see where water may be coming through a wall on the inside. So um, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of ways to patch it together. Any other thing in there, Jess? Any other questions? That's all we had. I just wanted to thank everyone. We are out for this summer. We'll be chasing leaks as the rain starts. So you'll see us back in the fall with our webinar series.